Well, good morning, fellow pike anglers, and welcome back to another spicy episode. Look what I have behind me. I have an absolutely stunning looking small lake that I have never ever fished before. I brought some topwater lures and some other juicy stuff. And we're also gonna try a completely new thing on my float tube that we are soon gonna get into. I'm all sweaty from walking <laughs> all through the woods to get to this lake. But finally we're here. The sun is rising, it's uh, late summer. I've actually heard some topwater eats here behind me. We have some very, very good looking brushes and trees hanging out here. It looks like we have some, some weed out in the water, some bait fish. So let's just get the platform rigged up and then we're gonna see if we can catch some juicy pike or perch on some cool lures. So let's do this. So this is the gear I brought today. Some perch rod, one pike rod, you know, fins, tackle, all the normal stuff. But before we get it into the float tube, we are gonna mount this bad boy. This is the Float Plus that some of you might be familiar with. I've never ever tried this before, but it's a trolling motor designed for float tubes. Very light and you can just mount it underneath like this. I'm gonna show you right away. So you just do like this. The good thing here is that the platform actually has an already made mount for this underneath that looks like this so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slide this one on just like that attach it and boom there we have it mounted and ready to go and now we have the rest of the stuff in this convenient little box here waterproof and stuff and in here we have the battery and the control which we're gonna control this uh, trolling motor with so now i'm extremely pumped to see how this is gonna work do we dare to try Oh, shit. <laughs> we're gonna have a lot of fun with this one, I can tell you that. I'm gonna put it into here and we're gonna have it here ready to go all day. There are some good attachments to this box, but I think we can just put it like this. Should be good. Ah, best feeling in the world, as always. I'm sure I could start from right here, but I'm just gonna... I, I just need to try this. Now we are on zero. Are we ready for 100? Let's try. Whoa! Not paddling. Bye bye. Ah, shit. Wow, we're gonna have so much fun with this one. Just as always, and especially when fishing new waters like we're doing today, I'm gonna use this deeper sonar, which is a wireless sonar that sends the information to your phone. We connect to the deeper app. And now we can see here, we have 3.2 meters, 24 degrees in the surface water. That's probably only just the, you know, the top layer of the water. It starts drawing this map, so after today we're gonna have a good picture of the structure and stuff. I'm gonna put this one over here. And this is the rod that I think I'm gonna be using the most today. This is my Saxa Shade The Perch Edition bait casting perch rod with a Revo MGX HS bait casting wheel. Super sweet combo. I'm gonna run this thin wire leader from darts. I don't know if I will be catching pike or perch, uh, hopefully both. So with this thin wire leader, we're gonna be safe. And now to the fun part. Have a look at this crazy little lure. Something like a frog style topwater lure, beetle, bat. It's called a Super NATO Beetle. Super cool lure from an Italian company called Mulix. I met them in France down at the Clermont Ferrand show. They turned out to have some really, really cool lures. It goes like this on the surface. It's a fully weedless. We can throw them like all the way into these trees. So I really, really hope and think that we're gonna have some cool action on this one today. But I've also brought some other cool stuff from this uh, Mulix company like uh, this super cool twitch bait, the Finder Jerk 110. This is gonna be awesome for you know covering water fast, especially when the sun comes up maybe and they're not gonna be on the surface. Then you can hear it on the name, the Finder Jerk. It's gonna be awesome for covering water. So I'll put this one on my other rod, same thing but spinning version with a Mitchell MX9 reel. And on this we're gonna cast this uh, Finder Jerk. So let's make the first cast in this cool lake. Three, two, one, let's go. Ooh! Did you see that first first cast and we had a pike? I think it was a pike. Attacking right on top of the trees. Come on, one more time. Fish on, fish on! Right on top of that tree! <laughs> there we go, first pike. <laughs> In this secret cool lake. Smack that frog, two casts in a row, and like, boom! <laughs> oh, holy shit, that was cool. I would never have caught that pike 
without this, you know, weedless topwater layer. We have this tree going up all the way up under the surface almost, and this one smashed it right on top of the tree. Bat style. Holy shit. That's what I call fast response of a water. Put you back and make another cast because that was damn fun. Ooh, shit guys, smoked it. <laughs> so cool. Did you see that take? I, I really hope you could see that on the GoPro because it smoked it right on top of this big tree going out there. And yeah, that, that was sick. I've never felt more like a bass angler than I do now. Well, except that time when I fished for bass in Lake Okeechobee, but so cool fishing to cast up over the structure. I was reading this one super slow. When the lure was right there, the pike smoked it. I mean, the bass guys, they're all crazy about this structure thing because the bass are hiding in there. And of course, other species do as well. Oh, missed another one, missed another one. Crap. Missed the bite and tangled up. <laughs> Come on, one more cast in there. So nice where you can cast it all the way up, almost to the shore, and like it doesn't get stuck. You just fish it on top on all the shit. Oh, went for it. Might be a perch. Okay, let's try this one now. I have done some, you know, off camera fishing with this one this year, and it's actually a really cool lure. Completely suspending, and when you twitch it, it goes very cool side to side. American style yerk bit. It's very fun actually. When I met those Molix guys, I had never heard about the companies. So I thought they were like really small, but it turned out to be a big brand. They're huge in the States. Working a lot with Mike Ancanelli. He's actually a part of the design of this lure, you know, very famous bass uh, tournament angler, and uh, they're awesome. Fish on, fish on. Second cast with a finder. Oh, it's a baby pike. Look at this baby, baby, baby. <gasps> All right, so the finder jerk is approved by baby pike. I think this was maybe the fish that went for my topwater lure that I mistakenly thought was a perch because of the size. But oh man, that was like smaller than my downsize baits for pike. Holy crap. He went straight into these trees. Can you see him? Do you know that there are big pike here or what? You know there's a big one around here, right? This is like the coolest fishing I've done in a very long time. Sneaking around these logs, you know, and just look at this color in the sunshine. It looks awesome. Let's hope that this sun is not gonna kill the action too much, but I'm afraid it's gonna do that because uh, my experience with summer fishing is that uh, the hours before and right after sunrise are usually the best. Ooh, shit, did you see that? Something big was up in the surface. What do you say, should we just go there? Just because we have the float plus. Let's go there real quick. So, speeding up from zero. Let's leave this one in the water. Do some float plus trolling. We have around four meters here. I saw this fish up in the surface somewhere out here. So I'm gonna, you know, make a cast like a sun feather. Like make one cast here, there, 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 there. I'm not gonna spend too much time out here if we don't catch this fish. Don't wanna miss the top water action. Oh, oh, it's perch. School of perch hunting. One attacked the lure, and then we had the whole school following. Wow. Look, here we have this school of perch below us. That was <laughs> following the, the jerk bit. Cool. Baby, baby perch hunting this one. Can you see them? Oh, and now there's. What was that? Didn't look like a pike. Did I just see like a one and a half kilo perch? Oh, holy shit. Look at the sonar. It's packed down there. So we're back here by those uh, nice trees hanging out in the water. So we're gonna do some more top water fishing. I'm gonna put this one on like slow drifting speed, like 25 perhaps. So as you can see now, we are drifting slowly along the shore like this. And I can just make short casts and cover this water very efficiently. If you're drifting with a certain speed, like now I'm drifting with 25, which uh, is very good fishing speed. Then if I press here, it stops. And you know, I can make high precision casts if I see a fish or anything else. And now if I just double press this bottom again, it uh, resumes the speed that I had when I pressed the bottom. So this is one of the ways that I think I'm gonna be using the Float Plus the most. Then of course, also when uh, transporting over long distances, this is gonna help a lot. And uh, 
The third is like if you're fishing on a windy day when not using the float plus you will have to compensate for the wind all the time with your fins and in the long run after a long day you might get quite tired in your legs. Now with the float plus you can just uh, you know put the float tube with the back against the wind dial this one up to whatever it takes to stay in position. So this is kind of like a manual spot lock. This corner looks really good. We have some shade from those high trees, which I think will be good now when the sun is coming up. Usually when fishing in you know summertime or sunny days, I like to search for those shady areas. Oop. All the way up in the tree, doesn't matter. Like pop, pop. Oh, oh. <laughs> I started twitching this uh, topwater lure and had a pike smashing it. Wow, guys, this is just too cool. Oh, all the way up in the tree. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Fully weedless. This is what I love about float tube fishing and fishing in general. Just hitting a random little lake to see what it hides. Trying some crazy lure, having some fun with it. If you haven't tried float tube fishing for a pike or perch in a small lake like this, you really should. You will get addicted. I can tell you that. Let's do some stand-up fishing. That was a long time ago. This weedy area in here should be good. Now I'm drifting slowly against the shore. So I'm gonna put on this one just carefully to just stop the drifting. I can cast all the way in here. Ooh, this is the biggest pike of the day. Biggest pike of the day. There we go. This is a decent one. No, don't go into the weed. Get up here. There we go, there we go. Was that cool or what? Saw the take and everything. Oh man. Was hiding between all those weeds. Holy smoke. That was the coolest take in a very long time. Went head first on this finder jerk. No monster, but ah, oh, there we go. Came off. Ah, uh, just standing up from the platform, seeing exactly everything from the surface down to the bottom, and just smashed it head first. And there was such an awesome fight. Inside the weed, and this light sucks a rod, the shell reel, this finder jerk bit. Well, let's do that again, shouldn't we? Do some more stand-up fishing. Who taught you food manners? You can't eat food bigger than yourself. <laughs> I mean, look at this. I actually think, yeah, the lure is, I would say, exactly the same length. First perch of the day, there we go. Too bad it was only like 10 centimeters. Let's just cast this one out behind the float tube and have a sip of water. And when we do, we can have a look at this. Not sure how well you can see it, but we have 7.5 meters of water. And it's just getting deeper and deeper. Just have a look at this, this is awesome. Trolling around a little bit while looking for good spots. It's fun, I, I found out a way to steer with the fins. If I leave my right fin in the water, I steer right. And my left, I can be steering like this. <laughs> oh, awesome day on the water. Time for some more stand-up fishing with a beetle. Looks very, very good. I'm sure they're gonna be pike somewhere around here must be in all this, I mean, sweet looking weed. Oh, did you see that take? Ah, oh, missed it again. Oh shit, Pike was above the surface. Oh. oh, I was not ready. That was such a cool take. 
Holy moly. Well, I guess the most important part when topwater fishing is the take, and that take was amazing. Doesn't matter if we land it or not, but man, that was cool. These takes are addictive. And look at these cool spots. I'm fishing this lure above this grass. It's like maybe 10 or 20 centimeters from the surface down to the grass. So it's like more or less impossible to fish with any other type of lure, but this one gets the job done. And so cool to be standing up from this platform. I mean, this is sick. One of the things that I like most about this one so far is the fact that you can cast it almost, you know, all the way up to the shore if you want. And then just bounce it down back in the water and retrieve it slowly, just waiting for that epic bite. That's something that we wouldn't be able to do with a, you know, traditional popper or something like that with treble hooks all over the place. Same thing with that first uh, pike I caught in the morning on top of that tree, you know. I wouldn't have been able to fish there with a more traditional popper or something like that. Walk the dog there. Oh, follower, follower, follower. There we go. Yeah. So it's coming from a distance behind and went for it carefully first and then boom, smashed it. Awesome. Get over here. Oh, there we go. Another top water pike. It's funny, you know, we had that bite on the first cast of the morning and then I caught a pike on the second cast. And since then I haven't caught a single one on this. I've only missed some really cool takes and some perch and stuff. But uh, finally, one more on the beetle. Gonna keep rocking this one in these uh, weeds. Seems like they are here, they're feeding. So, gonna put this one back. There we go, very easy to unhook. And bye-bye. There we go. This guy's getting chewed. Some tooth marks. Yeah, there we go. Hey guys, this is so cool. Look what I have found out. We have the wind pushing from this direction and I'm paddling this way. And traditionally, I would have to paddle like this and make the, you know, short casts to the left like this or like half backwards. But instead now with the float plus, I just found out that I can be standing on my knees like this, control the speed with this one and then use my fins back here as uh, steering. You know, if I put down my left foot, I'm turning left and my right foot, I'm turning right. And now all of a sudden I can drift like with, when boat fishing, you know, in the right direction. All of you float tube anglers out there know what I'm talking about, but this is so nice to be able to, you know, drift in the right direction like this. And we can quickly cover this water nice and easily. So now I'm turning left. Woohoo. Now I'm turning right. Woohoo. And this way I can control the direction which is completely crazy. I've never seen or heard anyone doing this from a float tube. So this is a good tip. If you have a float plus system and a nice and big float tube like this that you can be standing on your knees from, this is <laughs> game changing. All of a sudden it's like fishing from a boat for real. Fish on, fish on, hee <laughs> hee, one pike, again, when I'm standing on my knees, covering water against the wind, that is, like I said, a game changer to not having to make those casts backwards. Uh, on the side. Hello little pike, I'm standing outside that tree, waiting for a snack to come by, Oop. and found this jerk. Uh, well. That was my first pike standing on my knees like this, on this little jerk bait. So much fun. All right, amigos, that was it for today. We took a full round around this lake, fished uh, pretty much all the edges. You can see some overlay graphics from the deeper lake book, what it looked like. What we can see is that we had one side of the lake with deeper water, and then the two ends were quite shallow, and pretty much all the fish were caught close to structure, but also close to deep water. Those super shallow areas didn't produce much, but uh, yeah, structure close to deep water was the trick of the day. And as always, the deeper helped us to find that, so that's super cool. Even though we only caught small fish today, it's been been one of the best trips of this year period because we had such cool action especially in the morning before the sun uh, rose too high that's the tip of the day if you're fishing during summer make sure to wake up early or stay up very late because uh, during those uh, very warm sunny days the fishing tends to be not the best 
To sum up my experience with this Float Plus that I tried for the first time, I can say that, you know, there are things that are fun and helpful and nice, you know, and then there are things that are game changers. I would say that I've had three game changers before. Number one, when I started float tube fishing, that opened up so many new possibilities. The second one was the deeper. All of a sudden I knew what I was doing, you know, I could create maps, I could see what was down there, you know, that helped a lot. Game changer number three was this platform, you know, this uh, float tube that we've been fishing today. It simply takes uh, float tube fishing to a whole new level. You can bring so much more gear, you have these oars, you can stand up from it, and it's just awesome. And I think we just had game changer number four as well today when we try this one for the first time you know being able to mount a trolling motor on float tubes this easily this lightweight that's just amazing and to have this drift control when fishing to have the security you can go far no matter if the wind picks up or anything you're gonna make it back home so highly recommended I will leave you a link uh, down below where you can get this float plus and read more about it because uh, it was uh, Pontus approved last but not least these two lures that we tried today are also Pontus approved Man, we had some fun action on these, especially this uh, Super NATO Beetle. Super, super cool stuff. I will leave you links to them in the description down below as well. That was it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a comment if you'd like to see more videos like this one, exploring new lakes and stuff. I love to make these, so let me know if you want more of these. Now it's time to head back home for dinner, and until next time, tight lines. <laughs>